Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the That Scuffed Up podcast. Uh, as we said before, the previous two weeks, I'm here by myself. Uh, you know, we need some. I need to figure out some stuff to talk about because I can't keep doing this by myself. Uh, Justin, if you're out there, please say something. Yes, yes, I am. Oh, hello. Oh, sweet. All right. <laughs> uh, someone, someone decided to finally turn from his uh his his, his adventure, his uh whatever you want to call it, in Thailand. Uh, we, we are here for episode thirty-four of the That Scuffed Up podcast. Uh, b- back with back with both of your hosts, myself and Justin Lee. Uh, Justin Lee, uh, welcome back. It is great to be back. I had a very good time over in Thailand. It was good to have a little hiatus from uh, doing wiffle ball and school and everything like that. Uh, came back, things worked out pretty well. But uh, honestly, definitely one of the best trips I've been on uh, in a very long time. So, but. We're back, got to kick back into gear and get locked in, ready finals week coming up for a lot of people, so I'm sure a lot of people are very busy. Um, If you're in school, and um, like myself, who has to really kick back into high gear, but other than that, we are back. We have both uh, the people that are doing the show, and here we are. You know, just a a quick non-wolf ball conversation, you know, uh, uh, would you you, you recommend a a a little... uh, uh, adventure to Thailand. Uh, as opposed to, well, just you know, would would you would you would you say it's a place you'd recommend to people? I would definitely recommend. Well, because we went to three different cities in Thailand. Uh, we went to Bangkok, Chiang Mai, and Phuket. That was part of our itinerary while we were over there. And uh, the most amazing stuff there is really the people um, interacting with them. Uh, the tour guides that we had. Being able to drive different modes of uh, transportation, for example, like the postcard I have here, these are called tuk-tuks. Um, and most importantly, the food was uh, some of the best I've had in a very long time. I'm very, uh, I, I, and it might sound a little biased because I am uh, full Asian myself, but uh, definitely like Asian food a lot more than uh, a lot of what you see here in the U.S., um, and you get a lot of really good stuff. And also the price. The price of the food was in crazy. I mean, uh, to give you a little bit of a, a, a piece of what that means, um, you could get maybe like a five-course meal, like say like a Thanksgiving dinner for maybe five people. You could definitely get a, a really nice meal at night for less than $5 almost. I mean, um, we, we didn't – we it felt like we were spending a fortune in terms of uh, – the cash but really we were only spending uh not really that much in terms of u.s dollars so it was amazing uh i would definitely recommend you know go there for the nightlife and the food and the people that's a uh, that's something i would definitely share about uh being in thailand for sure gotcha we, we appreciate the insight well, i mean the, the podcast did miss you we miss you out there on uh tuesday night well actually i don't know if anyone else did but uh, our team did <laughs> Um, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more, we'll talk more about, uh, our team and how we did in your absence a little later, but, uh, we, we're here. We just finished up week six. We only got a couple weeks left. Uh, things are coming up real quickly. Just a quick outlook on the schedule, just to make sure everyone knows. Uh, so we have this coming week is, uh, just Tuesday, December 5th. Uh, not sure what day this podcast is going out exactly. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be in two days. Uh, probably not in three days as we're doing this at ten o'clock on Saturday night. So I doubt you're I doubt you're pumping this out on a Saturday night. So, um, Who knows? And so, so th- <laughs> this uh, I know. <laughs> so, uh, so, so uh, th- this coming week you got uh, you have the December fifth. Uh, you have you have your regular week seven games, and then on December 9th, you have the All Star game and home run derby over at uh, Balboa Peninsula, same place we've been doing it since the. Uh, since the spring, uh, since the spring, uh, we did in the spring, the fall, and now the, the winter, we had a break there when we had our summer. Uh, well, actually, that wasn't the All Star game; that was at the Bell Pum- the Peninsula. I take it back. But you know, since the spring season, we've had it. We've had our All Star game and home run derby at Balboa. So make sure make sure you people know uh, from your teams who's going to be going. I uh, love to see a lot of you out there. Week eight, we have uh, we have two on this Tuesday, December twelfth. That'll be the last week of the regular season. Last chance for teams to make their playoff push, get their playoff seedings, things like that. And then just uh, just make sure everyone make sure make sure everyone's clear. Uh, the playoffs will begin Thursday, December fourteenth. 
uh, starting at 5.30 for some teams. Some teams it'll start at 6.30. Uh, at 5.30, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it'll be a lot of um, – it, it'll be uh, – well, actually, we don't know the full playoff schedule stuff. It could be – it could be the Purple League is starting at that time. It could be D1, D2 starting at that time. Who knows? Uh, but that, that information will be coming out shortly with that with all that. And then Friday, December 15th, is when all the the three World Series will be taken on. Those That will be starting at 6.30 there, 6.30, 7.30, and 8.30 if necessary for all of those series. Uh, you know, we saw in this in this past fall season, two of the World Series need to get, needed to go to three games. So they use that full-time allotment. Uh, so that that's the schedule. Just so everyone knows, make sure you make sure everyone stays up to date. Uh, you know, if people need to take off work that, that or something that Thursday and Friday to make that playoff push, uh, just, just just make just make sure everyone knows and is, uh, everyone is clear on that. So, uh, and then also just for the for the playoff implications uh, for for Division One, the top four seeds make it into the playoffs. So there's no there's no wild card round. It'll be right away. The one plays the four, and the two plays the three. In the semifinals, before the winner of those series moving on to the finals, uh, for for the purple league, you have uh, you have the top three seeds make it to the playoffs. Uh, you have the two the two and the three seed playing each other on Thursday. The one seed gets a bye straight into the World Series, so they do not have to play Thursday. And the and they will uh, and then the the World Series will be taking place on Friday. And then for Division Two. That one's going. That one's going to be where the top four teams make it as well. So all four play, all four teams from Division Two will make it into the playoffs. Same thing: one versus the four, two versus the three. In that one, uh, we'll get into the standings later on. And then, uh, uh, then obviously, uh, the the World Series will be on December fifteenth. So just making sure everyone's up to date on that, um, and and just and just making sure make sure all those dates are clear uh, and things like that. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there quickly. Uh, just, just, just so everyone knows. But uh, for right now, for right now we can get into the into the results. All right, now that we've talked about all those dates and stuff like that, uh, just make sure your team all knows all of those so they can uh, stay locked in, stay uh, ready for the rest of the season. You know, we don't want to see people missing at the end of the season if it's a possibility at all. Uh, but let's let's go into week six here. Uh, we have all these all the results, some changes in the standings for for all for all three divisions, I believe. So. Uh, you know, J- Justin wasn't here for these two weeks, the last two weeks of the podcast and one week of the regular season, but he was here for week six. Uh, well, we'll get on to his performance later. Uh, let's start, let's start off with an early one here. You got the Trash Pandas taking on Shepherd's Pie, a, a two teams who are, who are in the, uh, in the playoffs going into tonight. Trash Pandas is a little more secure than the Shepherd's Pie right now, but Trash Pandas do get a six to zero victory. Moving their record up to six and one so far in Division One. Certainly does, and um, we we talked about Trash Pandas being that uh, other contention team that you know. Obviously, we've seen them a, a, a bunch of times. We played them in World Series. We've also you know they've knocked us out a couple times. But another good reason to say um, why tra- Trash Pandas are also a top tier team. Only one loss so far. As um, take a look at this Shepherd's Pie, um, having some struggles here but they definitely going to need some more uh, later on throughout the season and definitely not helping themselves you know getting a shutout loss uh, to trash pandas so um if the time is to really get get kick to kicking into playoff gear then this is the time to do it for shepherd's pie for sure yeah you know you, you mentioned the playoffs and the seedings and stuff we'll go into the standings a little bit late, uh, later as well and into more depth uh but i, I do want to take a look here at blake fitzgerald who uh, in some people's eyes, could be leading uh, the league for the MVP race. Uh, so far, a 513 average with a 600, 604 on base percentage. Uh, you know, their, their team is a game behind uh, in terms of the amount of games played. Uh, most teams in the league have played nine games so far, whereas the Trash Pandas have only played eight, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later. I'm not sure what exactly happened with, with what their later game, but... Uh, you, you you know we Blake Fitzgerald Blake Fitzgerald is off to off to a, uh, is off has had a great season and pitching wise he's been extremely good as well with three three forty eight ERA thirty one innings pitched sixty three strikeouts and eighteen in, uh, runs allowed uh, you know I I, th- I believe he's uh, he's second in the league in ERA right now which you know we, we saw we saw a lot of low numbers this previous year it seems like the Division one numbers have kind of creeped up both hitting and ERA wise so. Uh, I mean, those two literally go hand in hand. So, 
Blake, Blake Fitzgerald off to a great start to the season. Uh, or Shepherd's Pie, the previous week they had played the Louisville C pretty close. I believe that was, it was either a five to one or a six to one victory for Louisville C over Shepherd's Pie. But uh, you know, the, just not you know they're facing, they're facing the top two teams in terms of the standings so far. Uh, Trash Pan is just uh, I, mean, I mean sorry Shepherd's Pie is just not able to get the offense going. Uh, we'll see. If, we'll see if they're able to get the offense going and be able to to get some runs uh, these these next few weeks. I know this week Shepherd's Pie did only have three players, so uh, we we shall see what happens. But they they do they do have uh, they got, they got the Beach City Bombers coming up this week uh, as well, and then the fi- in the final week they got the OC Wolves of LA. So those will be two games that they that they I need to get at least one of those to, to be able to make it into that last playoff spot, in my opinion. Right, for sure, and definitely so. Um, that's what they're going to need for sure. A little bit of kickstart, a little bit of energy in there. Uh, Trash Pandas, like credit to Blake Fitzgerald. The guy's an absolute dog. We've seen him play some really good ball uh, the last couple seasons. Obviously a top-tier player now. Uh, there's a few other guys that are also in that you know MVP conversation as well that we are starting to see a little bit more. But you know, you've really seen this more than much and much more than I have in the last two weeks, and things have kind of really sh- switched around. And the the team that we'll talk we're going to talk about a little bit later also has an MVP candidate that uh, he can say so himself. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll get into that team a little bit. There's been a little. Uh, you know, there's there's been there's been some movement. Some of the averages and stuff have have gone down recently. Uh, some have crept back up. We'll talk more about it in a little bit. Uh, for now, for now, for now, we will go on to the. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not totally sure what happened with this trash pin is uh, Beach City Bombers game. It looks like it's been postponed. Um, so that it looks like that'll be played at a at a later date and time. Uh, maybe uh, I think most likely it'll get it'll get played in week eight if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, and so that uh, that's what it what appear on the schedule is is what's going to happen. So, uh, you know, well, I just got just got to figure. It. it Looks yeah, it looks like week eight eight thirty. This this will be made up. So, uh, next next game we got going on here for D one. Got the we got the two te- two teams that know each other very well. Both organized by me and sep- and uh and put in the league. Yeah, the L of OC, of OC taking on the OC Wolfers of L A. Uh, big big matchup here for the OC Wolfles of LA. Be a, be a way to get a huge win. The game I was very nervous of, uh, but the Los Feliz pull away big, uh, score and score scoring often, getting a twenty two to three victory. Yeah, certainly. So this game was very interesting. Um, you know, they started off a uh, little bit interested uh, with a new strategy. Try to flip the pitchers a few times. You know, between James Lee and Ethan Lee, of course. And uh, didn't really throw uh, Raffman too much around in this game. I saw a few guys get some hits. You know, Evan Kuraz also got a hit off of some of the pitching from the LA Wolves OC. It was a pretty good game overall. And uh, for myself, got a home run off of James Lee. So I- I'm happy at the end of the day if that happens. Um, but. Obviously, OC Wolves of LA got actually some runs chipped away on on the LA Wolves of OC pitching a little bit, um, so that's a good sign for them. But the other thing is they gave up 22 runs. Um, obviously, a tough loss for them for sure. Um, but anytime these two teams are playing, always a good time, fun competition. I know we like to throw a little bit of banter here and there uh, between the two teams because obviously these are friends uh, and teammates as well. Yeah, in in this game, it was without Dustin Staggs as well. Dustin Staggs has been gone for a few weeks here, uh, and, and they're still able to put up that much offense. Uh, you talked a little bit about the MVP. Uh, you know, earlier early in the year, I was uh, it looked like Jordan Dreschler was kind of running away with that MVP. And while he does have some great numbers, uh, another guy who's who's he could you could possibly put in first is put in first or second or third for the MVP race right now. Uh, would be Stephen Hayden himself. The back-to-back MVP has really boosted up that average and on-base percentage lately. He's currently tied for second in batting average with a 508, just behind Blake Fitzgerald with a 513 average, and also just behind Blake Fitzgerald in the on-base percentage category with a 595. Uh, you know, he, he's he's kind of made a little bit of a comeback and had uh, had two long, huge home runs versus. Uh, one off James Lee and then one off Ethan Lee. That Ethan Lee, the, that one ball might have traveled about 150 feet. Uh, and that's not an exaggeration. So, uh, and also, also Stephen does lead the league in hits right now with 31 hits, 74 plate appearances. Uh, so he, he's kind of he's kind of found his groove. He's kind of found his groove again. Uh, 
you know what 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 do you what do you and what do you make of kind of the, of this this of this MVP race uh, as we get near the end? Uh, like I was talking about earlier, because we were we were talking about uh, their team, which we're going to talk about next um, as one of those other Division One games. Uh, Tyler Moore is also one of those guys that are up there as well. I mean, you look at the leaderboard; his name is also in there in a bunch of different places as well. I mean, he's really had to pick up the slate for his team. Uh, a big surprise that we'll talk about uh, between LA Whistle OC and Beach City Bombers in just a few moments, um, but. You know, it's a very tight race to be, for sure. It looked like earlier we had Jordan Drixler as the MVP contender. Uh, kind of flattened out a little bit, but he's also really getting back in that groove as well. The pitching is also still really good for him this year. I mean, better than expected than we've seen. James Lee is another name that's in there. You said it yourself. Blake Fitzgerald is also there. And then, I mean, very... I, I don't want to say like a slow start because not really sure, but you're... This Stephen Hayden guy also really trying to get that, you know, back to back to back MVP conversation, but it's pretty tight. Uh, it, obviously, the conversation is a lot more different this year because we are missing uh, two important teams um, that have been around for a while. And now, um, obviously, that has created a big hole, uh, hole per se. Uh, and now we're starting to see where these uh, other teams have these star players on there as well. So there's a there's a pretty diverse group of guys in the MVP race right now. Yeah, it's one of the more it's one of the more closer ones we've seen in recent time. Uh, you know, you know, like the, like like the spring and the summer season; those are both pretty obvious. You know, true for the true Hendrickson for the spring, me for the summer. Fall was a little, a little bit closer, but I'm still I still I felt was pretty ahead. But this this one this one this it's really going to come down to these last couple weeks, and who knows if it'll be a dark horse candidate. But uh, just going back to the Elves, we'll see the fact that they were able to score 22 runs in not even five innings. Uh, it's pretty impressive in general, even if even if it was Ethan Lee they were going against. So uh, next 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 D one game, Ella will OC in another one, taking on the Beach City Bombers. Uh, as Justin mentioned, a very interesting um, very interesting game. Uh, one of the probably the closest game that the Wolfs of OC have played so far, uh, but they do come away with the eight to four victory. So the storyline of this game, uh, we also got a little hint from Tyler Moore himself, was the return of Zach Moore, who sh suddenly showed up out of the blue. Uh, he said he'd had his schedule fixed around, so he's been able to come back. Uh, we knew he's been an integral piece of the team for the past couple seasons when he was there and available. Comes back in. Uh, the first you know, a couple few innings, a very tight race between the two teams. Uh, Beach City Bombers did jump out pretty fast um, around the third and fourth innings. And then we had a clutch hit by Dominic Caroni, who was also one of, uh, you know, we've seen him hit a few clutch hits as well. He got a really clutch home run uh, in that game. Myself got a clutch, uh, not clutch per se, but a home run in that game as well. Definitely helped in a triple. Uh, and then the bats are rolling even more for Elvis OC, including Steven and Jordan Drexler. Um, for four guys, not too bad for a day, you know, missing one of their top pitchers and Dustin Staggs as well. Um, but it seemed like maybe a little bit of rust for Zach Moore. Uh, I don't want to say it right now. It's still very early, but nice to see that Zach Moore's back out here. And, uh, Tyler Moore also st still doing a pretty good job in terms of batting. And we saw a little bit of more, uh, from the other guys as well. They also brought in a guest player as well. Uh, I didn't know too much about him, but um, I know I understand that he is a former coach of James Lee, and he's also played in a few other wiffle ball leagues, if I'm not mistaken, or baseball leagues, if I'm not mistaken, but um, also had a home run in this game as well. And um, this was actually, like, for the first couple innings, a very tight game. Yeah, th and this this one almost felt like a playoff uh, playoff game. I almost feel like it could be a, a World Series preview right there. If if Zach if Zach is there, then that really could be a, a World Series preview. You know, these teams, th these two teams here have combined to win the the last three uh, World Series championships. Uh, two of them not being in D one because D one didn't exist at the time. But uh, you know, Beat City Bombers got off to a two zero lead, uh, and then the and then the top of the fifth inning. Uh, Dominic Crony hits a two-run home run, then and then after that, uh, walk another hit, and, and then a three-run home run by Justin. Beach City Bombers make it back to five-four, uh, bring it to five-four based off, off that home run, and then the sixth inning, we'll, we'll see get three more runs. Jordan with the home run, Steven with the home run, but 
Uh, you know, this 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 game was a much slower start, and it was, it was almost a had to be a reset period here for the other Wilsonville we'll see. The first the first few innings, it was a uh, it was a Stephen gets a hit, and then the next, and then Jordan Justin Dominic get out, and then Stephen gets a hit, and then Jordan Justin Dominic get out. So it was a it, it was a little it was a little bit of a struggle, and credit to the Beach City Bombers for uh, for being able to get uh, to get out uh, those guys in the order, but. Uh, you, you know, we we saw we saw a little bit more. We saw we saw Stephen Hayden stand out a little bit more. He came in, uh, nearly got out of a uh, nobody out bases loaded situation, but did allow two runs that went against Jordan Dreschler, uh, which just puts his which puts Jordan's ERA all the way at a one point oh four, uh, which is still which is still ridiculous. I mean, Jordan Dreschler still has twenty three innings pitched, four runs allowed in the whole year, fifty three strikeouts with a one point oh four ERA. Uh, which is obviously is very good. Leads the league in the ERA. Uh, actually, Steven is third in the league in ERA with a 3.55 ERA. So Jordan is looking like a prime candidate for either MVP or the Cy Young, which would be a second Cy Young. But uh, but yeah, you know that if if Zach's there, this I could see this being a, a World Series, a potential World Series matchup. Uh, where the where these teams are gonna have to uh, duke it out and, and, uh, in this game, at least we'll see we're able to get the the better of Beach City Bombers. Certainly, and um, you know, to Jordan Drex- Drexler's credit, you know, being the front runner of the Cy Young Award right now is a big deal because um, there were questions about whether he'd be able to adjust to you know the type of talent that's starting to come in the league, and uh, obviously he has proved to a lot of people how well he's been able to adjust since the last time he won Cy Young. Because obviously that was a very different time, uh, maybe not as accurate pitchers during that time as much, but certainly in the last few seasons we've seen a lot more talent come through, and Jordan Drexler certainly has become a testament of uh work ethic and really trying to adjust to something that um you know sometimes is really hard to pitch i for myself pitching is still a thing that is kind of inconsistent for me but you know it's, it takes time and oh well, 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 let, let's talk about let's talk about your zero era right here one inning pitch no strikeouts no runs no strikeouts. Oh, you're just trying to make me blush <laughs> um <laughs> That's a fluke. Come on, but um, it, uh, it kind of was. We talked yeah. about Michael Haskins. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it um, was. But uh, I'm happy with it. So you know, it, it, at the end of the at the end of the season, if I have a zero point zero ERA, a home run off of James Lee, I am happy at the end of the day. And I got a home run off of Zach Moore too, which is great. All right, buddy. All right, chill out there. <laughs> All right, let's move on. <laughs> right, well, actually, actually, before we move on, I do okay. want to kind of highlight. You know, we talked about Zach Moore a little bit earlier with the MVP. I uh, go over some of his numbers. 26 innings pitched, 50 strikeouts, 3.69 ERA with 16 earned runs allowed on the season. And then hitting-wise, uh, he is currently now tied for the league in home runs. Uh, he was ahead, especially by a long shot. You know, after the first couple of weeks, he had nine home runs. And he's kind of slowed down a little bit. Uh, but uh, some so, some other guy also has 12 home runs. Uh, oh, uh, so, some guy, some idiot named Stephen Hayden also has 12 home runs on the year. Uh, so Tyler is currently tied with that with a 473 average and a 574 on base percentage. You know his his numbers have dropped off a little bit, but uh, he still could make a push for some award or possibly an MVP if he really picks it up these last couple weeks. Which uh, you know they, he does play the Trash Pandas, he does play the OC Wiffles of LA, and he also plays uh, Shepherd's Pie. So he plays he he, play, he plays two teams that are currently below him on the standings, and then one more above him. So such a greedy guy, such a greedy it, guy. If he's able, if he is able to do something, uh, and be able and be able to uh, m- make make a push here, it's like, you, you know you never know what may happen here, but uh, anything is possible. But uh, moving on to our last Division One game, we have the Avid Carbos taking on the OC Wolves of LA. Uh, the OC Wolves of LA coming off of a very high scoring game, as we mentioned earlier, twenty two th- to three loss for them. Uh, but they but they bounce back and actually actually they they pitch a shutout. Uh, they hold the Avocados to zero runs, which may be the first time that's ever happened to the Avocados. Uh, but the OC Wolves of LA hold on to win this one two to zero. See, here's the thing about the Avocados. You know, the fact that this is so surprising because they always hit a lot of runs, and if not, you know, runs. And to see them get shut out by OC Wolves of LA. Uh, credit to OC Wolves of LA for some really great pitching in this game. Um, that's a that's a that's a really good win for them um, in in this stage of the season. Um, you know, winning two zip, but also Avocados as well have been also doing pretty good on the pitching stuff and only limited the two runs. But this is 
you know, not typical of what we usually see with the Avocados, you know, getting into these low scoring games and um, this this game being one of them, two to zero, which is uh, mm-hmm. crazy enough to see um, from a team that, you know, had their issues last season, um, mm-hmm. obviously winning in tight situations, but not being able to finish them. And this time they finish, not just finish, but got a shutout. Yeah, very interesting result here. And it was the difference here was it was a James Lee two run home run uh, that got them their the only runs out of the ball game. Uh, but from the sounds it was from the sounds of it, Ethan Lee uh, had locked it in on the mound. You know he he got that he got that opportunity in that first game to get all the jitters out and get all the and get all the bad pitches out of the way. And it looks he was pitching well, James Lee, who surprisingly didn't pitch very much against the other we'll see. Uh, I think he pitches four innings, didn't allow a run. And you know, James Lee is, is the guy in, in the discussion for a one any time uh, in the year. Uh, it's a three fifty six ERA, twenty seven innings pitched, 70, 72 strikeouts is it's, it's absolutely nuts. Yeah. Uh, he, has a, he has a sixteen K per nine, which, if I'm not mistaken, that's the highest K per nine in the league. And I, I want to try to quickly figure, you know, what's uh, what, what's seventy two divided by twenty seven? Uh, yeah, so he's he's averaging. Uh, so most so he's averaging uh, right now two and two thirds strikeouts per inning. Uh, so so two out of every three innings he's averaging to getting all three outs via the strikeouts, uh, which is absolutely it's just absolutely nuts. Uh, you know we saw certain, uh, similar stuff from that from True Hendrickson in the in the spring season. It's the second time bringing him up, uh, where I think he had thirty four innings pitched and only had four outs that were not strikeouts. So. Uh, it seems like James Lee is doing some very similar stuff, uh, but we'll see if he's able to make a push. He's he's in th- uh, third. He's in fourth, pl- uh, third place right now for fourth place right now for ERA, just a, a tick behind Stephen Hayden, literally a point oh one behind. But uh, you know, w- 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 let's let's get into some of these uh, Division One standings now. Uh, Ellie Wolfsville see do sit at the top here. An eight and zero record in conference, a nine and zero record overall. Trash Pandas in second place, six and one record in conference, seven and one overall. Uh, I'm about one hundred percent certain those two teams for sure have clinched the playoff spots, and they most likely have clinched the the top two spots as well. Uh, they're only well, they're only three games left in the in the season in the season uh, for, for some of these teams. Some of these teams only have two games left right now, so. Um, no one's gonna, no one's gonna knock those two teams out of the playoffs. Those teams are guaranteed. I think those teams are guaranteed the top two seeds. But uh, as of right, if the Owls will see win one more game, they will be guaranteed the one seed based off of run differential, uh, which was, which is you can also find on the website. You can figure out all the tiebreakers uh, and all that things like that. Even if the Trash Pandas do beat the Owls, will see in the final week. Uh, Owls will see just need to win one game to clinch that one seed. Uh, Beach City Bombers currently sit in third place right now, uh, three and four in conference, four and four overall. OC Wiffles have shot up from sixth to fourth place, and are two and five on the season, three and five in the regular and, and o- overall record. Avid Carbo sit in fifth, two and six record, three and six record overall, and then Shepherd's Pie in, is sitting in two and six as well with a three and six record overall. So very tight at the bottom, only one game, only one and a half games separating the three through the six seed. Uh, just what, what, what are your what are your, some of your thoughts on how the Division One standings are shaping out uh, through the first six weeks? Uh, very interesting. Obviously, we have two teams that are really distinct at the very top, and it's a uh, basically a fight at the very you know uh, last two seeds. You know, for the third seed and the fourth seed. Uh, you know, a couple teams. You know, three and two wins for each for most of them. Beach City Bombers, if Zach stays around, certainly could be at that playoff contender. OC Wolf is LA, LA. Definitely, if they play like they did against the Cowboys, for sure they will be guaranteed the spot if they're able to play effectively like so. Avocados definitely need to keep doing what they're doing, but definitely at, at least keep the bats rolling. And Shepard's Pie does have great talent. They definitely just going to need a little kickstart to get things into high gear. But um, very interesting picture. And... Um, I mean, I'm sure, I don't know what most people would imagine this would have been at the very beginning of the season, but um, definitely in my eyes is something um, that would seem so indicative of how the season probably would have gone so far. Yeah, you know, the, the big, thing, big thing for this end of the season is just going to be the who, who, you, who are you playing at right at the end of the season. You know, out of these bottom four teams, uh, the Avocados are the only ones right now to play the Ellie Wilsonville C. 
Uh, going to this last regular uh, last week, they play each other week seven. That could, uh, you know, that could that could hurt. That could hurt the Avocados, given the fact that Louisville City are undefeated so far on the season. And then, you know, uh, looking at the teams that play the Trash Pandas, um, Beach City Bombers have to play the Trash Pandas, who the oh, Trash Pandas won earlier in the year. And then the Trash Pandas also play the OC Wiffles of LA. So that could be very, that, so that could be a little detrimental to those teams. So uh, you could see a possibility, you know, Shepherd's Pie don't, do not have to play any of the top two seeds anymore. Uh, Shepherd's Pie do have to play the OC Wiffles of LA and, uh, and the Beach City. Uh, and. Uh, uh, who is the other team they played? If I'm trying to, uh, it is Beach City Bombers. Okay, so they have to play the three and four seed. So you know, it's just going to be come down to who gets those last couple wins. It's a it's a very tight race right now. Uh, I know all the tiebreakers and rules are on are on on the website, but I can go over them real quickly. Uh, first tiebreaker is the conference record is your record in your division. The second uh, tiebreaker is your overall record. Uh, which for Division One, uh, all the Division One teams won their their cross divisional games. So uh, the third one is the head to head record versus the team you're tied with. So uh, you know these these last couple of games where there's some of these teams that are playing each other is going to be very crucial. Uh, you have the the win percentage versus the teams that are above you in the standings or the rankings. Uh, you know which uh, as if, if you're able to get a win over, over the Trash Pandas, so we'll see that that's going to be a huge tiebreaker for you. Uh, we have not seen it happen right now. The trash pandas only lost did come to the Louisville C, but you know I've I've, I've seen crazier things happen. Uh, the fifth the fifth one is uh, is your run differential. Um, so you know uh, right right now uh, the Avocados have a they sit in fifth place, but they do have a plus one run differential, which is twenty one better than the OC West of LA. That twenty two to three victory really hurt them in the run differential departments. Uh, Beach City Bombers are plus 14, and Shepherd's Pie are minus 28. So, not super great signs for OC Wolves of LA or Shepherd's Pie if it gets to, if it gets to that. And then finally, the last one would be a coin toss. Uh, just just choose tails. Uh, that's that's always the strat. That's always a strategy I saw here on TV, and it seemed to work about 95% of the time. So, uh, it's going to be very interesting seeing with D1. It's a very very much a, a race down a race to the finish here. It certainly is. There is a huge race in those. Uh, groupings there and the for the top two teams for certainly are going to have to uh, figure out ways to secure those spots and i'm sure they certainly can do and possibly will do so um get ready for that it's going to be interesting and obviously we're going to talk about it more in depth once we get to the end of the season for sure yes yes we will absolutely uh enough enough about division one here uh let, let's move let's move on to division two uh, we we had three games going on here for Division Two. Two of them, uh, the, same, the same team pl teams playing each other twice. But uh, first one, we got the OC Juicers taking on the Bad News Dingers. OC Juicers pulling out their first win of the season for a six to four victory over the Bad News Dingers. Uh, you know, just great, great to see, great to see uh, them uh, them ha make, get at least a win on the season. Make sure they. Do not fall, uh, you know, like we saw the Thrashers go 0-12, I think it was. So it's great to see the Juicers get their first win. Yeah, it is. A uh, very close game, too, 6-4 to four, uh, between them and as well. And also they're, where they stand between these two teams um, in those last two seeds. But obviously the playoff picture is a little bit different this year for Division Two. So, you know, they, they everyone pretty much makes the playoffs. Now the question is, at this point in the season, um, how are you going to diagnose each other when you as you prepare for the playoffs, and um, what's your going to be approach when you get to that time? So right now is a good time, and for OC juicers, maybe now is a time to really figure things out. And it certainly seems like they've held, they're helping themselves out right now. Yeah, you know this this could be interesting going into this last week. Uh, this win oh, this win over the bad news dingers actually puts the juicers one game out of the three spot. Uh, where the bad news dingers currently uh, currently sit, uh, so it could it could be very interesting. You know, another way could could possibly could, I think could, it could potentially put the juicers in the third spot, um, but you know, based we'll have, we'd have to see based off their previous games against bad news dingers and things like that. Um, so it could going to be very interesting. But I'm glad to see the OC juicers get a victory there. Uh, just, just good to see. Just good to see overall and for bad news stingers. You know, not, not the, not the best sign, but you know, uh, they got to see what happens here. 
Um, next up, we have two games in a row of the same team. Uh, I th- we'll probably just combine them into one just because uh, – or try to separate a little bit and then kind of just combine it into one. It is Woosh taking on Wiffle D's. They played each other at 725 and 830. Uh, Woosh take the first game 8-3, to three, and then Wiffle D's take the second game 7-6. to six. Uh, You know, the away team win each- wins each game here. Uh, and, you know, after, after this game, Wiffle D still sits at the top of the Division Two standings. Yeah, this is like kind of like a mini series, you know, between these two teams. And obviously this could be indicative of what we see in the World Series, potentially, you know, the top two teams, Division Two right now, uh, between a team that we know very well. And obviously Wiffle D's is also a great team as well. Um, with yeah. The, <laughs> with the absence of the OC Seals. Ella Wiffle see Div 2. Yeah. <laughs> It's been a power grab between those two teams for sure. Uh, I'm sure you can say that as well, um, you know, because we know how well both of those teams play. Uh, Woosh obviously had the upper hand last season. Wiffle D's definitely want to become that team to dominate in that division too as well. And uh, I mean, there's a few guys we could name as well, uh, such as uh Nick Yusoff is, you know, one of the best bats on that team as well, alongside Drew Plant and Ryan Miller, who are, you know, obviously the people we know personally, uh, you know, Ryan Miller being on our team and Nick Yusoff being that guy as well, uh, once upon a time. And then, you know, for Wiffle D's, Chris Gars is a cheat code for that team. Um, his average is way up there. And then obviously his brother, Larry, and then Alex Harris, we've talked about a few times, but, um, Welcome to the preview of what we could see in the World Series, for sure, between these two games. Yeah, you know, uh, they, they do sit at the top right now. Uh, Wiffle D's are, are a half a game above Woosh. Uh, they've played one more game conference-wise. Although they have played the same amount of games uh, in, in overall, uh, Wiffle D's are 6-3 and three and Woosh are 5-4 and four overall because Woosh played two Division I opponents and lost both of those, but... This this could be very interesting as we get to the as we get to the end of the season. Uh, two teams that seem evenly matched based off of these results here. I think both. I know for sure Woosh were missing some guys. I'm not. I think Woosh, Wiffle D's might have been missing a guy or two. But uh, it's going to be very very interesting to see uh, what what happens with 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 the rest of Division Two. Uh, just going over it real quickly. You got Wiffle D's sitting in the one spot. I mentioned their record six and two in the conference, six and three overall. Woosh in second, five and two conference record, five and four overall. Bad news, Stinger sit, still sit in the three spot after that loss, but they are two and five with a two and six record overall. And then finally, you have the OC Juicers at one and five, one and six overall. So it's going to be pretty, pretty interesting to see how things turn out for the rest of the season. I think I believe some t- I believe uh, they might they, some teams in Division Two might have three games left. Um, I, if I'm if I'm not mistaken on that, so uh, well actually 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 the OC Juicers they got they got four games left. I I, st- I stand corrected. Oh I know they got they got to they got to play uh, they got to play each team at least once, and then I believe they have to play Wiffle D's twice. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, I know, oh that's very interesting. So uh, we'll we'll see we'll see how that happens. We'll see how all that shakes up for Division Two. Should be very interesting to see. Certainly will be a lot of things to talk about, uh, you know, in terms of Division Two. We there's a lot of you know great things that are happening down there. Even though it's only four teams, uh, th- there's still a lot of stuff we can diagnose with that as well. Um, but for sure, keep up, and we'll talk about them more obviously when the season's over as well, and seeing how that playoff picture does come about. We yeah, we shall find out. All right. Enough, enough with the with the Division One, Division Two stuff. Uh, mo- next up, we got the Purple League. We got a good amount of game. We got, we got a we only got a couple games here in the Purple League. Actually, uh, we'll talk about what happened with one of them in just a little bit. Uh, but first up, we got the Glizzy Gladiators taking on Swingers and Dingers, which I recently found out a few weeks ago. That is that is the Wiffle Does from last year. I kind of had to I kind of had to figure that out. Uh, so. Uh, but uh, Glizzy Gladi, I know, I know these are two teams that really love playing each other. Uh, I know I can't remember who it is from Swingers and Dingers, but all the Glizzy Gladiators talk about like that. That's their that's their favorite player. That's their first favorite person to be around, uh, and it's great great to great to play against her. I can't remember her name, but uh, but Glizzy Gladiators do get the ten to six victory here. 
Rebecca Leeds or Stephanie? It, it, it was it was Rebecca. Yes. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't remember. I, I apologize. Absolutely. Um, between these two teams, for sure. Obviously, Gleazy Gladiators are the showboat team. You know, with their Instagram, the live vids, and the mic'd ups. Uh, speaking of which, you know, they also had a really nice uh, BBQ at the end of the games out in the parking lot. Had a great time. Yeah, we'll, we'll get. Yeah, we'll get to that a little bit in a, in a little bit as well. Yeah, they were cooking up the hot dogs out there. Um, but between these two teams. Uh, very interesting stuff. Obviously, Glizzy Gladiators had the better of this game as well, and Joey Ponder holding down with his crew. Of course, Shelby Balin, also a very good uh, pitcher for this team, and uh, as far as I understand, very entertaining as well. Yeah, but, and yeah the Glizzy Gladiators are an entertaining bench, bunch in general. Uh, they were missing a couple guys last week. They saw Kyle Fromm return to the lineup and things like that. Uh, so we'll see We'll see how things shake out for the rest of their season. Uh, next Next up, we were spo- uh, we were gonna have we got spice and beach city dingers, a uh, little little bit of miscommu- little of uh, stuff going on here with, uh, with one with uh, the beach city dingers are being given the win it appears, a um, little, little bit of mis- um, uh, some stuff going on with, uh, uh, just kind of some like uh, kind of some stuff uh, like late, later on the day where uh, we got spice were not available to play. Uh, but it was not known at the time, so we're try- I'm scrambling around trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, luckily, I had Br- I had one of the we got spice. I got this, uh, Brandon Miles contacts, who's the captain of we got spice, and I was able to figure things out. But it looks like Beach City Dingers were given the win in that one, so we'll, we won't we won't hold on that one too much. But uh, Beach City Dingers do play another game, and this is where that postpone issue comes <laughs> comes into effect. Uh, Beach Beach City was scheduled for two games at the same time. Oh, um, yeah. Obviously, it's not possible, so they decided to postpone the D1 game and they continued on with the Purple League game. Uh, so the Beach City Dingers played the Pancake Batters, and Beach City Dingers pulled away with an 11 to 10 victory here. Certainly was worth it, I guess, to um, put priority of the Beach City Dingers team, and uh, they beat the Pancake Batters by one run. Uh, very interesting. I didn't know that that was a uh... A scheduling issue there and i thank you for pointing that out just uh very interesting that that was something that we noticed uh obviously to, to be honest i didn't i didn't notice i was reading this right now oh okay well <laughs> live news right now on the that's the podcast even though we're recording yeah, it we, we make <laughs> we make stuff up we yeah if we don't see it we make stuff up anyways um Take it till you make it yeah the show goes on right um and we you know beat city dingers tyler moore will control uh Really good stats. I mean, hey, take it easy down there, man. They're, it's Purple League. Let's go. Um, but obviously, really close game between these two teams. Pancake Betters so were here last year as well. Um, but I'm sure it was entertaining for them, and I'm sure there's a reason why they they chose that uh, game over than playing the Trash Pandas um, in that schedule. Um, but yeah, a very interesting win, and uh, we'll see what happens in Week 7. Should be very interesting to see indeed. Uh, looking forward to see what happens with the Purple League. Uh, some of the Purple League standings here. Glizzy Gladiators sitting in the first spot, 6-1-1 one one record overall. Beach City Dingers sitting in second place, 5-2-1 and one record. And in third place, you have the Pancake Batters, who have a 3-4 and four record. In fourth, you have Swingers and Dingers with a 3-5 and five record. And then we got Spice here with a 1-6 and six record uh, go, go, uh, going into Week 7. That's the standings we got here. Uh, we we sh- we will see how things shake out for the Purple League for the rest of the season. Yes, yes, yes. Certainly we will. And um, you know we still got two more weeks to go, and then playoffs are coming right around the corner. It is also very getting cold out there, so make sure you guys are staying warm as well. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get some hot cocoa going at some point as well. Uh, speaking of which, and it's uh, right around that time where we got Christmas going on. So um, if, if I didn't say it before, happy Thanksgiving, if that wasn't said already and, uh, Merry Christmas, you know, it's right around that perfect time, which is, uh, my favorite time. I'm not sure what your favorite time of the year is, Steven. Nah, I just being on the field, man, you're screwed. No, no, no matter, no matter what the field is. And we'll talk about some other fields in a little bit as well. Bah humbug. Um, all right. So. Joy Ponder had a very interesting, uh, like we talked about earlier, an interesting barbecue at the parking lot after all the games and stuff. Uh, wanted to 
Steve and I want to give a quick thank you for that. Um, definitely had a great time out there. Obviously, uh, myself wasn't out there for too long. I, I think Stephen also was out there for a short time, but it seemed like they were doing that for a little bit, cooking up some, you know, dogs and uh, had some food out there, some drinks for everybody to share as well. Had a few teams out there as well. I like the idea. It's very fun and uh, definitely brought a lot of people together for sure. Yeah, this was something that was the idea that was put in place. I heard about this a couple weeks ago. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it happened. I heard uh, I heard we missed out on some real good chili dogs based off the fact we had 8.30 games, and they started cooking around 7.30 or so. So um, it was cool to see. It was put on the Instagram as well, a uh, video and a, and a picture of it. Uh, so we, we, we appreciate them setting that all up. Uh, you know, I, I was I was out there for pretty much the whole time. We ended up getting kicked out by the, by the, the police getting us out of there because they wanted to close the gates. But... Uh, uh, it was it was cool. To, it was fun to see, and who knows, there could be more less stuff like that in the future. Yeah, definitely for sure. I know we've done a few like pizza parties and hot cocoa stuff as well. Maybe that could be a thing that could come up soon. You know, getting some hot chocolate out there and getting some guys to, to get together because obviously we are here in this league to socialize and make some friends and obviously sometimes we don't get too many opportunities to do that when we're in game time um i think purple league though has you know leniency to kind of mess around a little bit and definitely talk with those people a little bit more and have some good time obviously division one and two are a little bit more competitive so maybe tempers are running a little bit depends on how well on what competition you see but other than that i thought it was a great time yeah it was pretty fun out there we'll see it's just cool to just cool to hang out with people sure so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens for the, uh, with any more of that stuff in the future. Yes, sir. Um, now we're at the end of our program, but, um, you mentioned to me before the podcast, you also had a tournament that happened at the time we were recording this, um, earlier, um, during this, uh, end of the week. Um, I know you wanted to definitely talk about that a little bit. So, uh, start from the very beginning. Let's share that story here. Yeah, so I I went out and uh, on Saturday I went and competed in, uh, in a one on one tournament. Uh, little king of the hill or queen of the hill. There were no women there, so this was just a king of the hill for this tournament. Uh, with some with some with some very different rules for this tournament. I can use cut balls. You can use some different bats. You could see me modeling the bat I used on Instagram. Or it was, it was a wood handle with a plastic barrel, uh, which uh, was was interesting out there. Um, yeah, yeah, a slower speed limit. You had a 55 mile an hour speed limit, but you could use cut balls and the different defensive rules and things like that. So, uh, went went out went out there. Uh, you know, I, I I got a little unlucky with kind of the matchups I had. Uh, the, each team got two pool play games, and then based off that, you advance on the rest of the tournament. Uh, I won my first game 1-0. Second game, I went against a man that uh, was. <laughs> They ran that tournament and has a lot of experience, a lot of football experience in general. Uh, lost that, which is which is Peter Mockaby. I uh, lost that game. Uh, then uh, there were 15 people there. Based off the run differential, I had a minus three run differential. Uh, I got placed as the I got placed as the ninth seed. Uh, ended up winning my ended up winning my first playoff game or elimination game uh, three to one on a walk a walk off two run home run. Uh, and then I played the number one overall seed. Uh, it was another man who, who goes out to these uh, goes out to the United Wolfville tournaments and a very good fast pitch player. And yeah, this this day he was a very good. He was extremely good in this tournament uh, in the name of, in, uh, by the name of Pete Tainton, uh, who uh, Justin Justin also knows about uh, whether he remembers it or not. We were at the. We were at the beach. We're doing stuff for uh, with, uh, oh. with, uh, with 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 an organization that will not be named at this moment. But um, but after we were done, uh, we ran into uh, P. Uh, P. Tainton came out, uh, played some wiffle ball with us, and also his two sons were out there. Who both uh, both his sons, I believe, at least one of his sons played in this tournament as well. Uh, he he was good. He was good as well. I was throwing to him a bit afterwards, but I go up against Pete. Uh, I, I I made it a close game. He. These are all two inning games, by the way. So these go very, these can go very quick. But uh, had had a chance early in the first inning, but he uh, had runners on first and third, two outs. But he absolutely li just laid out for one uh, to hold it to zero runs. Uh, he ends up scoring seven in the in the bottom of the first inning. Just just not much I can do. 
I end up making a little bit of a comeback. I I make I score five uh, with with the help thanks to him from some uh, some defensive errors uh, where he kind of was kind of rushing stuff, but. I had uh, I was seven to five at one point. I had a run on second base with two outs, and I uh, struck out on a pitch that just barely clipped the top of the zone for strike three. So uh, that's how I got eliminated. Uh, un- unfortunate matchups. Uh, the two people I lost to, they played each other in the finals. They were the top two players on the day. Uh, and Pete Tainton ended up beating Peter Mockaby in the final. Uh, I can't remember what the score of that one was, but I think I did score the most, most runs off Pete that day. Pete was. Uh, was ex- extremely unstoppable, especially hitting wise. It took a couple of real nice defensive plays for me to be able to uh, to hold them just to seven runs in general. Because it, it's one of it, at that speed, and with it's a further pitching distance, and it's a clo- and it's a slower speed limit. So it's 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 even more offensive than, uh, than something like OC wiffle ball. It, it was it was very it was very tough for me pitching wise because I do not like giving up runs at all. I kind of you kind of have to accept it in, in this style. So. A uh, little unlucky for me. I felt like I could have done a lot better, uh, but uh, just things worked out the way they did for a reason, I guess. Um, my first time playing this style of play, uh, en- enjoyed it. Uh, just wish I just wish I didn't have to play the, the top two players on the day. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, those two guys um, were teammates at one point, correct? They, they, they they've been they've been teammates for a while. Uh, you know they they both play they both played with the Whippets who uh, went out to the to the national and world championships from 2020 to 2022, uh, which they which they they finished in the top they were part of the teams that finished in the top four in 2020 and 2021, and then they finished top 16 in the final in the in 2022 season. Uh, you know they they kind of took they took a they took a break this year, especially Pete. He can he kind of just took a real uh, big break from football. Just yeah, he talked about spending more time with the family and things like that. Um, you know, was, uh, who, who, uh, it seems like the 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 fire has kind of been back lit back under them. And they, I know they've talked about doing some fe- other future tournaments in the future, and, and they have talked about possibly going to UWF next year. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, but overall. Uh, for for me personally, I I I, I felt like I, I felt like I was one of the better players out there. Just kind of got put in a got put in a tough situation where there wasn't a whole lot I could do. Yeah, for sure. And as the name implies, uh, for somebody who like myself was watching this that doesn't understand what you mean by one v one, like you're basically by yourself against other individual people, correct? Yeah, this is literally just one player versus one player. Uh, the fields are the fields are a lot smaller. The fields are a lot smaller. It's only about ninety to one hundred feet from from home plate to the to the fence, uh, which there is a fence in this one. And then uh, width wise, the, the field is a lot skinnier as well. So uh, it, it has some similar rules to fast pitch in terms of how you get outs, but uh, just just some different stuff to account for that makes the game that, that makes the game interesting. It helps it move along faster because. If you were to have a super wide field, then nobody would be able to get the outs because all you have to do is just touch the ball, and and the pitcher would have to run extremely far. Which the, I wish I had video of that diving play that was made on me because that that was ridiculous. Uh, he he caught it. He was about he was about he was a few feet away from the from the fence when he he, fu- he fully extended and laid out and made a catch on me to to hold me to zero runs. Otherwise, uh, who knows what could have happened in that in that in that last game I got eliminated in, but. Uh, I got knocked out in the quarterfinals. Uh, I didn't make my money back, unfortunately. Oh. If I had I won that game, I would have at least made my money back, and who knows what more I would have done. But uh, it, it 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 happens, and uh, just good, just good. I I enjoy playing different styles of wiffle ball, and it was good. To, it was good to see. Certainly was, and I I know you've had your fair share of getting miraculous catches. I forgot to mention earlier when we were breaking down those games that Zach Moore also had some really nice catches in that game as well. Had one where he had to turn around to catch one off of Jordan Drexler, stole the home run away, and also one off of me that hit a long shot to him, and he still caught it with his hands. Um, So a lot of interesting things there. Oh, also, Tyler Moore, if you're listening to to what I just said, uh, and if Tyler's watching, then... You, I know you understand what, exactly what happened there. Um, we did get him. 
um, <laughs> with the transcripts because we know that's a big thing for him. So um, he'll, if you don't understand Inside Joke, maybe you'll figure it out. But it certainly seemed like he had a great time. Thank you for, for sure for sharing a lot of uh, that story as well. Uh, I mean, um, his name is Tim, right? The oh. the one that we met up at that one time at the beach, you know. All right, that, 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 that's Pete. That's Pete. Okay, my mistake. So Pete, very nice guy. Uh, obviously, we played um, again, not against him. We he was present at the tournament that we're actually going to be t- partaking in um, t- closer to New Year's pretty soon. Um, seemed like a really he's a really nice guy and really knows what he's doing. And yeah, he. he very family oriented as well. So good to see that you got to see that guy back out there as well. Yeah, and you know, a little transition to our last little thing. It looks like he will be at another tournament that will uh, that will be at at the at the end of the year as well. Yes. Um, so we did this uh, tournament last year as well. Um, this tournament was when there was a lot of wet weather. I, I think this was actually one of the first few times we also started doing the podcast a bit, mentioning stuff like that. Um, it was, yeah. Yeah, and now we're going back with a different team. Some of the same guys, um, obviously myself, Steven. Uh, Jordan Drexler is also coming back. We got James Lee on our team and uh, another new name to add, Tommy Hernandez. I know some people know who that is. Uh, he's also been to some of those tournaments as well. I know, uh, re- remember him with the uh, Pit Vipers. Uh, I'm going to bring those out as well for sure. Um, but just a little preview because we're going to start practicing for that tournament. Going to be uh, very interesting. This is a very popular tournament as well around this time of the year. Um, so pretty excited to be able to get into this groove and get out there and see some faster pitching. I, uh, I understand Steven is also very excited about the group of guys that he's got. Yeah, you know, we've... I've. We'll, we'll go into more depth later on with the seat uh, with with this group, but uh, you know, representing OC with ball, as you said, uh, I'm the captain of the team. We have Justin Lee, we have Jordan Dreschler, we have James Lee, and we have Tommy Hernandez coming in as an outsider to represent OC with ball. Uh, very very good very good group here. So, uh, so, some unknown and, and some known. Uh, I mean, we talked about it on the podcast with James last week. He's known nationally. He's known by a lot of people around the area. I uh, was ranked number eight in one of the most recent lists for the future stars of wiffle ball. Uh, we have jo- we have Justin and Jordan as well, who played in, in a couple of the Upland tournaments this year. We have me, who's obviously played in a lot of a lot of different styles and stuff. Went to went to York recently. Went to uh, that still feels weird. That was only that was less than two months ago. I was in I was in Pennsylvania. That's still wild. Time is fine. Uh, was she I was in Arizona. Uh, playing against some of the best players in the world, so I'm you know, looking forward to that. And then, and then Tommy Hernandez is going to be a uh, is going to be a good piece for us as well. So uh, you know, I didn't I didn't want to go out and try to get like a, a huge outside piece, try to pay for someone to fly in to to play with us and stuff like that, which uh, you know that happens a lot in the wiffle ball world. So uh, I want to try to keep it local and give give you guys a chance. And I think. I think this gives us a good chance to do well, but uh, as I mentioned, we'll talk more in depth for it as we uh, as we get close to this tournament. But uh, but that's your group that's going to be representing OC Wiffle Ball at this at this New Year's Eve tournament. Yes, it certainly will be. And then, like you said, we're going to talk about that a little bit more down the road uh, when we get closer to this tournament a little bit more. So keep an eye out. That's a little preview for you guys of what's going to come next in the few podcasts. Obviously, uh, we're getting close to the end of the OC Wiffle Ball's winter season as well. So we'll also be uh, getting to mention those um, playoff pictures, um, those predictions. Obviously, that's a big thing that we love to do um, before playoffs start off and then uh, getting a recap of, of the season in, in general. And then obviously, if we do get the spring schedule to come out, um, eventually then we'll also share that preview a little bit as well. But um, that's definitely been what our program is today. And uh, I think we got everything out that we need to. One, one more thing that we, sh- that we should get out in terms of this, in terms of the schedule. You now we talked about it. We have the 14th is the, is the first day of the playoffs and the 15th is the second day of the playoffs. Uh, but if you want to, if you want to spend three days in a row with wiffle ball people, you can also on the sixteenth, uh, you can you go register on OC Wiffle Ball or OrangeCountyWiffleBall.com and go sign up for the Winter Twenty Twenty Three Golf Tournament. Uh, that'll be taking place on December sixteenth, starting at eleven thirty at the Strawberry Farms Golf Club uh, in Irvine. So, uh, if you are interested in that, 
Uh, you, you can go sign up online, but there's prizes available, di- different styles of play, different different games that go on, and, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, if you if you want to spend your next, your seventy two hour, pretty much seventy two hours straight with OC uh, with OC football people, uh, sign up for that as well, or, or get people that don't play OC football to come sign up for that. Uh, anyone is welcome to come to come play in that if they, if they would like to. So, um, there's also that as well. Like and like Caleb you said, we'll uh, we'll see when the spring schedule comes out to to kind of highlight that a little bit as well and see uh, what happens with that. Uh, other than, other than that, I think that that's about that's about all uh, OC wiffle ball wise. Did we mention about the All Star Game and Home Run Derby already? Yeah, we we did. That was put in the schedule. That'll be put. That'll be in near the beginning of the, uh, of of the of the podcast when I talked about the schedule on uh, which will be on December 9th. Absolutely. All right. Cool. Well, that it seems like that's everything. And uh, obviously, Stephen has covered uh, that extra portion as well. And make sure you guys also check out everything else. And thank you, Stephen, for being able to uh, take the place by yourself and really run the podcast if you haven't seen those two podcasts they're out there right now uh he also had an interview with the amazing james lee rookie of the year last season um great podcast there so if you haven't seen that go check that out that was about a week ago um but other than that i think we're good to go yeah i think we're about good here you know uh thanks for justin for being a guest on the podcast here this week uh we we appreciate you coming on every once in a while so uh, this has been this has been Stephen Hayden. This has been a uh, Justin Lee. I hope you guys enjoyed my intros and outros. I did make some sick out intros and outros. I thought in my mind, which was written by the black black box of the that scuffed logo. But uh, I liked it. It, it, it. I had to do what I had to do. I didn't have anything else. So I thought it was uh, funny. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we appreciate you. We appreciate everyone listening in. Uh, we'll see everyone out there on Tuesday for Week Seven. Uh, and playoff playoff push has begun. Time for some of those teams to make that push, or we'll see what teams end up not making that push. So uh, we'll see you guys out there. And we'll see you guys for next for episode thirty five next week. Yes, Bye. Sir.